Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about something very basic as it relates to image segmentation which is using color spaces for uh, segmenting your images. And apparently I missed this topic completely when I covered uh, histogram based segmentation more than two three years ago or something and uh, recently quite a few started asking questions where well that kind of relate to this type of a solution. So here we go and do not forget to hit the subscribe button and for those of you feeling extra generous you can show your generosity by hitting the thanks button down below. Okay, now let me go ahead and jump into the code, but the goal is to do exactly what you see on the screen. You have a bunch of colors in your image and you would like to segment pixels based on the specific color. I do not recommend segmenting using the RGB color. So the, the approach that we're going to follow is convert RGB into a different color space and then uh, use that color space for segmentation because you have much more control when you do that. So let's cover all of that. It should be pretty sh quick and short video. So let's go ahead and jump into the code. And the image we are going to segment is basically the one that you saw on the primary screen. And here we can choose any of the colors. Let's go ahead and choose the blue one. By the way, you can choose the yellow color, but then again, if you want to segment not just the pixels, but the objects, then you know that you should be using watershed to separate these two objects that would be uh, probably combined or joined together depending upon how you choose your color. But I covered Watershed in the past, so go ahead and check that video. So let me close this and get started with the code. We are going to use OpenCV library primarily, and I'm also going to use scikit-image for measuring and also for reading the images. And all of these should be pretty familiar uh, to you, the regular viewer of my channel. Again, hit the subscribe button if you're not a subscriber. So let's go ahead and import PyPlot for plotting purposes so we can view the images. OpenCV and NumPy, obviously, we need to handle some numbers. And from scikit image, I'm going to import IO and measure methods. So there you go. So let's start by importing our image. I call my uh, image marbles.jpg. So I'm using io.imread. And if you want to see how the image looks like, go ahead and plot it. It should be lo uh, looking exactly the same unless you use OpenCV to read the images. I, uh, I'm i using scikit-image for a reason because when I read images using scikit-image, it reads them as RGB, so the colors look exactly the same. But if you use OpenCV, then it reads images as BGR, so do not forget to convert them into RGB. So there is there's a method for conversion of BGR to RGB. So I don't want to take care of all of that, so I, I'm just using scikit-image for reading my images. And once it's in the code, it's basically a NumPy array and three channels three channels representing R, G, and B, red, green, and blue, okay? Uh, ideally, you can actually go and just choose the blue channel and try to segment these objects using the blue channel, but you have much better control if you uh, if you move from, uh, or if you convert your color space from uh, uh, RGB to HSP, hue, saturation, and uh, I'll talk about this in a second. In fact, I have a link up here that we will be visiting in a, in a minute. Okay, so first thing first, how do you convert RGB to HSV? It's very straightforward. If you're using OpenCV, it's just a CVT, dot CVT color, and we want to convert RGB to HSV. And by the way, if you're using OpenCV uh, to read your image, there is a method for BGR to HSV. Okay, so again, please be familiar with OpenCV. It's got a lot of cool stuff. Okay, let's convert this. And when we do that, if you look at your HSV image right there, it should be exactly the same dimensions, but the numbers look different because now we are in the hue saturation space. So now we can actually create a mask or threshold the image by selecting only the ones that we care about. In this case, we only care about the blue ones, the blue marbles. So what color, how do you pick your blue uh, color? Again, there are various resources for HSV space, but this one seems to be a pretty straightforward one. I just did a quick Google search and I found this and I really love the way this, this person actually presented the result right here. So think of this as, I mean, this is HSV space represented right there from zero to 180 is the hue, right? So that's the hue space and it's going all the way from red through green, through blue, through all the way back to red. So that's zero to 180. Now the saturation goes from zero to 255. If you look at zero saturation, that's basically white. 
up there. There is no saturation, right? So that's white. As you increase the saturation, it gets more and more bright and it goes all the way from 0 to 255. And the V is set to range uh, 20 to 255 according to this person. Uh, we'll just keep V. Uh, it's, it's, for now, we are not using V for segmentation. We are just using H and S. But again, read more about what HSV space is and you can choose the range even more precisely rather than uh, the way I'm mentioning here. OK, I mean, we are going to uh, pick it in a very nice way. Don't get me wrong. So let's with that information, let's come back. Now, let's say, in fact, let's not come back. I want to segment the marbles that are in blue color. In fact, they are kind of around that color ish, right? This color. So how do I pick those? And the color actually changes the saturation a little bit. In fact, if you come back here, if you look at the plot, it's dark blue around the edges. It's slightly different color. So let's come back here and say, OK, it's somewhere around here. So I'm going to select my H from about 100 to 120. Yeah, I can go to 130 or 125 ish, but let's do 100 to 120 ish. And how about our saturation about somewhere around here? Above that, it's kind of white. So let's go around 100 to 255. You see the scale is going this way. That's 100, that's 255. So if I go back, I am going from 100 to 120. 100 to 120. Maybe I could have gone to 125, but let's leave it to 100 to 120. In the H space and in the S space, I am going from 90 to 255. Yeah, so that gives us the blue mask. So let's go ahead and define that. And we are applying that blue mask onto our HSV image right there. So let's go ahead and apply it. And let's check our mask. How does it look like? There you go. So that's our original image and it's picking all the blue marbles pretty nicely. Except you see how you have like these reflection right there, the tiny dots. And that again, this is where deep learning can really help, right? So if you train a whole bunch of images on images that look like this, then that entire object would have been segmented uh, using, for example, mask or CNN. But now we are looking at simple ways, easy ways of doing things. So here we have like the objects kind of segmented, except we have these little holes. So we know how to fill those. Let's go ahead and use the binary closing operation, which is like uh, dilation followed by erosion. And when you do, do that, then some of these will be gone because when you dilate the pixels, these get closed. And when you erode, then there is no, I mean, the closed ones are not going to be eroded because they're already closed, right? So that function is available as part of SciPy. I'm going to use ND as part of SciPy. And again, binary closing is available even also in OpenCV, I believe, and also scikit-image. But this one is readily available. So let's go ahead and use it. And uh, I'm going to use a kernel of 7 by 7. You, uh, you need to use large enough so these are closed. If you only use 3 by 3, then some of those are probably still left over. So this is experimental based. So let's go ahead and view. And there you go. All of those are gone. If you actually do 5 by 5, again, I'll let you experiment. I don't want to bore you with uh, the little things like that. But uh, again, go ahead and experiment. But now these are all nicely segmented. OK, so now that they're segmented, let's convert them into labels So where each object is given a unique label value. So I can go ahead and extract the metrics. So how do you do that? Again, measure.label. That's exactly why I imported measure from scikit-image. So when I do measure.label on the closed mask image right there, now I should get a labeled image. Now let me go ahead and plot the labeled image. You can see how each one of these is in a different color because each object here is a different label, has a different label. Once you have a labeled image, then you can easily extract metrics. First of all, let's go ahead and visualize it. And again, scikit-image.color has label to RGB, so it converts your label image into RGB. So let's go ahead and do that. And now let's go ahead and plot the overlay and label to RGB, label image, and uh, my image equals to image. All this is doing is it looks at what your original image is and overlays the labeled image on top of that in RGB. So that's exactly what that function does. And now let's go ahead and plot it so you can see exactly how the result looks like. So all the ones that are not segmented, like are not relevant is in black and white. And the ones that are actually blue marbles are in different colors. Each color represents a unique object. OK, I don't want you to misinterpret these as different color uh, marbles. They're all the blue ones that we 
uh, segmented. Now let's go ahead and report uh, the object uh, parameters. What is the size? What is the distribution? So you know how to do that as part of scikit image measure. We have region props and region props table. This directly captures it into the table format and there are various metrics that you can capture. I am only capturing the label number, area, diameter, mean intensity, and solidity. Solidity tells me how rounded the objects are. If it is one, then it is perfectly circle. If it's close to one, like 0.9 or something, then it is circular and so on. Okay, so let's go ahead and extract the properties and let's go ahead and capture that as part of our pandas data frame and print the first five rows. So there you go. So my labels are one, two, three, four, five, and this is the area of each of these marbles and the mean intensity right there and the solidity is almost like 0.9697, right? So that's almost rounded. Here you go, a quick segmentation. You don't need machine learning. You don't need machine learning training and all that kind of stuff, you know? Of course, if you have enough images where you have a lot of these marbles, uh, then you can use mask or CNN and I'm going to cover exactly that topic. Stay tuned to this, uh, uh, you know, to, the, uh, to my channel. Again, depending on when you're watching it, I may have already covered Mask or CNN, just search it on my channel. Uh, and uh, yeah, good luck uh, learning. Just hit the subscribe button. And again, hit the thanks button if you're feeling generous. Thank you guys.